Welcome to Educator.com. This lesson is about solving addition equations. In this lesson, you're going to learn about solving addition equations. And ways that you could use this are to find change in height or weight of an animal as it grows. There are several vocabulary terms. First, an equation is a mathematical sentence that has an equal sign. So you've probably worked many times with expressions such as just x plus 3. Well, now it becomes an equation when you put an equal sign and set it equal to another value. If you look at the word equation, you're going to notice that it almost has the word equal in it. So that can remind you that an equation is a sentence, mathematical sentence, with an equal sign. So this would not be an equation because there is no equal sign. Isolate. Isolate next means to get the variable alone on one side of the equal sign. Maybe you've heard on TV or something that when a person is in isolation, they are alone. So you can think that isolate means to get the variable alone. Inverse operations are operations that undo each other. Another way to think of inverse is opposite, opposite operations. So operations that undo each other. For example, addition is the inverse to subtraction. And multiplication, oops, let me rewrite that. Multiplication is the inverse to division. Those are operations that undo each other. So if you add something and subtract it, you've, un you've canceled out the operation. Let's look at the subtraction property of equality. The subtraction property of equality tells us that if you subtract the same value from each side of an equation, the two sides will remain equal. So for example, if 12 plus 4 equals 16, I have a mathematical equation, a mathematical sentence, which is an equation. And now let's subtract the same number from both sides. So for example, if I subtract 4 from both sides, 4 minus 4 is 0. I'm left with 12. And notice over here, 16 minus 4 is also 12. So when I've subtracted the same number from both sides, my answer will be the same. So I'm keeping it equal by doing the same thing to both sides. In algebraic terms, if you have a plus b, equals c, and you subtract b, b minus b goes away to 0, and you have a, and now over here you have c minus b. So when you originally began with a plus b, you now have c minus b after you subtracted b from both sides. Notice that the sides have changed. So remember to always subtract the same from both sides when you're solving equations because there's an equal sign in the equation and we want to perform equal operations to both sides. Let's try looking at inverse operations in order to solve addition problems. Uh, we have 38 plus x equals 42. And remember, like we talked about, we want to isolate the variable. We want to get x alone, because eventually, if I can work it down where x is alone, I can see what it equals. So let's start off with 38 plus x equals 42. I have a positive 38. Remember that we're going to focus our attention on what's in front of the number. The, when there's nothing in front of the number, we know it's a positive value. We just assume that it's a positive. So the opposite of positive 38, or adding 38, is subtracting 38. Let's subtract 38. I'm using the subtraction property of equality because I'm subtracting the same number from both sides, subtracting equally. 38 minus 38 cancels out to 0, and I've isolated x, because x is all alone here. And now I can subtract on this side. Borrow, 12 minus 8 is 4, so x equals 4. So I've isolated the variable, I've gotten it all alone, and now it reveals to me what the value of x is. It's a good idea to use substitution to check your answer. Although it takes a little bit longer, in the beginning when you're learning about solving equations, it's a really good way to check and make sure that you're, un doing, you're understanding what it is that you're doing. 
So what that means is I've just found out that x equals 4. So I'm going to go back to the original equation here and put 4 in. And if I do get the answer 42, that means I've done the problem correctly. 38 plus 4 equals 42. And 38 plus 4 is 42. So yes, it's true. I've done the problem correctly and x does equal 4. Let's try the inverse operation here. The opposite of plus 7.3 is to subtract 7.3. 7.3 minus 7.3 cancels out to 0. Remember that when you subtract decimals, your decimals should line up. So I'm going to borrow. This becomes 11 minus 3 is 8, and 8 minus 7 is 1, and bring down your decimal, 1.8. So that means y equals 1.8. Let's go back and check our answer using substitution. So in place of the y here, I'm going to put a 1.8. 1 1.8 1 plus 7.3 equals 9.1. If we did it correctly, the answer should, when I add these two numbers, the answer should be 9.1. So I'm going to add my decimals by lining up the decimals. 8 plus 3 is 11. 7, 8, 9. 9.1. Yes, it does work out. So y equals 1.8. Let's try drawing a model. Sometimes that might help you understand how to set up your equation if you're writing a word problem. And the idea for the model is that a part plus a part will give you the whole. Let's look at this example and draw a model for it. A puppy weighs 5 pounds. Over the next year, it gains g pounds. Now it weighs 12 pounds. How much weight did the puppy gain that year? So in the beginning, the puppy weighed 5 pounds. It gained a few more pounds. Let's call that its gain for G, G for gain. And after it gained the pounds, its total weight, what it equaled altogether, see how the bars line up, was a total of 12 pounds. So that means when I do 5, plus g, I get the total, 12. So here's our equation. Part, in the beginning it weighed 5 pounds. Then it gained some weight, we don't know how much, g, and that gives us the total of 12. Remember that the information you don't know is your variable. Variables always represent the unknown. So how much weight did the puppy gain that year? We're looking for the gain, and so that's why that's our variable. 5 plus g equals 12. Let's subtract 5 from both sides, subtraction property of equality, and g equals 7. Let's go back and check our information. The puppy started out at 5 pounds, he gained 7 pounds, and now he weighs 12 pounds. How much, pup, how much weight did the puppy gain that year? 7 pounds. Remember that you always want to answer a word problem with units and our units here would be pounds. Let's try drawing another model. A mountain climber started his second day at 250 feet elevation. After a day of hiking, he ends up at 621 feet elevation. How many feet did he hike that second day? So let's say that this hiker has already gone up the mountain 250 feet. Write it sideways. Let me fix that too. So he's gone up the mountain 250 feet. He stops there for uh, his nighttime rest. He camps out there. And on the second day, he continues hiking up. And we don't know, um, we don't know how much he hiked. I'll call that h for how far he hiked. You can call it any variable you want. But we do know that now he has reached a total of 621 feet. So once again we have our part plus part equals whole. So the first part, this 250, plus the second part, the h, gives us the total, the 621. So our equation now is 250, the first day's hike, where he starts on the second day, plus the entire second day's hike, equals his total height, 621 feet. Let's subtract what he did the first day to reveal to us how much he hiked the second day. 
250 minus 250 is 0. And h equals, his second day's hike equals 1. 12 minus 5 is 7. And 5 minus 2 is 3. So on his second day, he hiked 371 feet. Remember to include your unit of feet. Let's go back and check that that's what the problem was asking for. How many feet did he hike that second day? And yes, on the second day, he hiked 371 feet. Let's try some examples by writing equations without drawing the model. A store owner is selling a sweatshirt for $49.95. He paid $25 for the sweatshirt. How much profit is he making? So when you go into the store, you see the sweatshirt that costs $49.95. And you know that the store owner paid $25 for the sweatshirt because maybe you've seen it online somewhere else. And you want to know, is, how much is the store owner making? Is he getting too much money from you? Let's take $49.95, the total price that the sweatshirt costs, and let's subtract how much he had to pay for it to find out how much he'll be making. 9 minus 5 is 4, and 4 minus 2 is 2. So he's going to be making $24.95. So he's almost doubled the price of the sweatshirt here. He paid $25, and he's going to be making an extra $24.95 on the sweatshirt. Let's go back and check the problem, make sure we've answered it correctly. How much profit is he ma making? Okay, let's include our unit. He's making $24.95. A car dealer bought a used car for $2,000. He made some repairs that cost him $600. He then sold the car for $4,500. How much profit did he make? So this car dealer found an old car and bought it for $2,000. So he spent $2,000 at this point. And he made some repairs that cost him $600. All right, so he's spending $600 more. Then he then sold the car for a total of $4,500. How much profit did he make? So you could do just the arithmetic and say that he spent $2,000 and then spent another $600 and you would get that he spent a total of $2,600. And then you would see that he's selling the car for $4,500. And so that's how much money um, the buyer would give him. And you want to subtract how much money he spent to find out how much money he would actually get to pocket. And that would give us, he would actually be making $1,900 profit. Well, let's check how we, we could write this um, with an addition equation, including a variable. Here we've done it the arithmetic way without a variable. So how much profit did he make? Remember, if you're having a hard time getting started, that your variable represents what you don't know. So let's call P for profit. So he spent a total of $2,600. $2,600 is what he spent. And then plus his profit, the P, plus his profit will give us the total price which was $4,500. So once again, we've set up part to whole. Part of the money is how much he spent. Part of his money is how much he's going to make. And together, that gives you the total amount of the car, how much the buyer is spending. So we have 2,600 plus P equals 4,500. Let's take out how much money he's spending, and that'll leave us with the profit. 2,600 minus 2,600 cancels out to zero. We're left with just finding out about his profit. P equals zero, zero, borrow here, nine, and three minus two is one. So his profit equals $1,900.